So it's probably evident by now, either you know from the title of the video or uh, this big machine here, that uh, I purchased a metal lathe for myself. So what I have here is a King Canada 12 by 36 model number KC-1236ML, uh, gearhead, engine, metal lathe, you know, precision lathe, whatever you want to call it, it's, a, it's an engine lathe. Uh, machining is something I've wanted to get into for some time now. Unfortunately, uh, my journeys over the past couple years of trying to find something used and relatively cheaper uh, were fruitless. So like there was a college, local college here that sold off a bunch of student lathes. They were really, really bad, like backlash and like the 50, 60 thou type stuff. They were really wallered out and they wanted a bit too much money. More money than I was willing to spend on something in that condition because you'd have to put another thousand bucks into them just to get them to uh, do what you wanted them to do accurately. So I said, fuck it, essentially, after waiting a couple of years, I managed to put a few bucks aside and went ahead and bought myself a new lathe. So what I want to do is I want to take you guys along the journey with me as this is something entirely new to me. So yesterday I went down and I picked this up from the distributor. They touched base with me early la or late last week and let me know that it was here. So I touched base with one of my good buddies, Robert. Thanks to Robert for giving me a hand with this. Uh, he's got a big uh, Silverado 2500 HD and we had them load that into the back of his truck with a forklift. I managed to get a lend of a cable or an engine hoist, which is over on that side of the garage right now, off one of my buddy's brothers. We used that to get this out of the back of the truck and onto the stand here. And now I'm getting ready to actually dive into cleaning this thing up, getting the head stock filled with the, uh, the proper lubricant, uh, getting all the ways cleaned up and getting that lubricated, getting all the, essentially what I like to call shipping goo off the uh, machine all together and get it all nice and lubricated. And then I'll be ready to flick it on and look at the, where the journey goes from there. So one of the things that's absolutely necessary if you're ordering one of these lays, these things are made in China. They're imported by, you know, whatever company you want to call it, King Industrial, Grizzly, they're all the same thing. Uh, when you get those, they're covered in like a shipping oil type stuff. And I'll bring you in now. I guess while I'm talking, what I'll do is I'll just bring the camera in in a separate segment. I'll set that together so you can see, you know, the headstock. There's a bit of dirt and gunk and stuff on it. We looked behind the, uh, the back of the chuck here, you'll see... There's a bit of goo and sticky stuff all over the place where the chuck mounts to on the headstock. Uh, just various dirt and gunk and shit that you don't want on your lathe when you're actually using it. So, what we're going to do is I just picked up a brand new can of WD-40. Hooray. Fantastic. What I'm going to start out with today is, one, I want to open up the headstock. So there's six, probably four mil Allen bolts on top of this. I want to take this top plate off have a look inside. These things come with an inspection slip and I don't trust anyone to inspect anything that I'm going to spend a lot of money on and use more than myself. Neither should you. So we're going to open this up, have a look inside, make sure there's nothing kicking around that's going to do any damage. Once we're sure that that's all well and good, we'll go ahead and we'll fill this up with the required oil and we'll talk about that when we get there. Once that's filled up, we'll put the top back on and then we're all ready to uh, dive into cleaning up the waste and all the other surfaces that are currently covered in uh, shipping goo. So, let's go ahead and pull this top off and have a look at the gears inside. Make sure it's all clean so we can get it filled up with some oil. So if machining and metal work and potentially getting your hands on a lathe at some point is something you're interested in, then I'm going to make an assumption that you, like I, I probably spent a lot of time watching machining and lathe and milling videos and all kinds of stuff like that on YouTube or other places on the internet, reading forums and all that. And uh, it's always great to do a lot of your own research, but it's also really good to have actual people who've done this stuff that you can consult with regarding, you know, making sure you're doing things properly uh, when it comes to uh, machining. 
Uh, this is no joke stuff. These kind of machines can really do damage to you. So I'm lucky in that my brother-in-law is a millwright and has spent time as a machinist. I have a really good buddy of mine I've known for about 15 years now who spent the first part of his career as a machinist. I've got a few other buddies who've been into milling and whatnot. So apart from having like, you know, the popular lay books that you can buy or, you know, the machinery handbook and all that stuff, having people with the actual experience is a huge benefit. Uh, I know I learn a lot by example, and uh, having someone to be that example who's done this stuff before, who's familiar, more familiar with these kind of machines than I am, uh, is actually really, really good. Just a little blurb. But either way, I'll finish taking these screws out, and we'll go ahead and we'll have a look down the side just to make sure everything's good. We'll see how our inspector uh, did. <laughs> There's the cover, it looks like it's just made of fiberglass or something, for both the change gears for threading as well as where the motor connects to the spindle drive for the gear. So I'm going to take you quickly and show you that. If that's something you're interested in seeing, let's see if I can get the camera to swing around here for a moment. The lighting over here is going to be a bit rough too, so you can see here's where our change gears are for threading. To go back and forth between metric and standard and then also you can see back here the belt drive so now that we've got that cover off we should be able to just easily slide the top plate off of the uh, the headstock here so i'll do that now So I just went ahead and pulled my lights and stuff over. It does look relatively clean inside here. Now there are a couple places where, if I can get this to actually focus a bit better, hold on, right here please. Uh, you can see there's like a bit of grimy dirt type stuff there. Uh, if I look right down at the bottom here, I don't know if it's gonna focus down there or not, almost. Come on baby, try to focus down there, let's see. Yeah, you can see there's like a little bit of grimy, gloopy stuff there. And if I can actually get down there with my hand and pick it up. So this was probably run in the factory, and that's part of your whole, you know, inspection check. But if I look at this, what's on my finger here, it's almost like a bit of scotch bright maybe, or like a bit of wool or something. So, I mean, in the grand scheme of things, a little bit of wool or whatever woolly that is, is not going to really have any impact on steel gears but I'm still going to go ahead and give that a clean out so I'll get a rag down in there I'll get everything wiped out that's in there that I don't like and then I'll bring you back we can have a second look at it and then we'll get some oil in it and similar situation as well here on the top plate or the uh, the headstock cover or whatever you want to call it you can see there's kind of like a bit of goo and gloop on it it's not really horrible but there's some spots where it looks like there's a couple hairs there or just a bit of crap left over. So I'll hit this with WD-40 and give it a nice wipe too. So you can see there's a bit of goop here. It's nothing horrible. I think it would be fine if we had just filled it up. But because of the way I am, I want to make sure it's as clean as possible before we get into it. So I'm going to give this a wipe up with some WD-40, make sure it's nice and clean. We'll get in, clean it with the headstock as well. Then we'll go ahead and get some oil down into it. So then other just a couple of those light little woolly gloober type things 
that were uh, in the bottom of this. All the other oil that is currently in there, I guess it's the oil they put in when they first ran the machine after they made it to make sure it was all good. Uh, there's just a little bit of that oil left there. So now, this thing calls for, and this is the funny part, okay? This is, this is where it gets good. So I ordered this from a local tool supplier, not gonna name them. Um, they couldn't tell me what kind of oil went in the headstock, and they couldn't tell me what kind of oil to use on the ways. And that was kind of disheartening. So what I did was I just called the manufacturer directly. So I called King Canada in Montreal, left them a message. Uh, one of their service guys called me back, told me exactly what goes in the head and exactly what goes in the ways. So for this lathe, you use a medium weight ISO 68 hydraulic oil in the head. So it's an anti-wear ISO 68 hydraulic oil. The head of this takes 2.5 liters. As for the ways, once I get those cleaned up, they just use a standard SAE 30 heavy duty oil that's got a lot of viscosity so it's sticky. Uh, it'd be similar to like actually buying some kind of whey oil that has that sticky viscosity. So when we get ready to do the whey, I'll get a bit of that and I'll just show you between my fingers how it'll kind of give you like little spidey webs when you, when you uh, squish your fingers together with it there. So in the meantime, we're going to dump two and a half liters of oil down to the top of this. I'm not going to bother putting the head cover on yet because I don't want to do that through a uh, funnel. It'll take all day. It's just, you know, half of that five liter junk that I picked up gets dumped in here and we're good to go. Put the top back on, put in our six bolts, and we're ready to clean up the rest of the machine. So, let's put some oil in this baby. So like I mentioned, I called King Canada. They told me I need to use anti-wear hydraulic oil, so AW ISO uh, 68. I just went to Canadian Tire and bought it. They had their own motocraft. This is the cheaper certified stuff. I'm sure if you went online or you went to... A machine shop services place you could pay double or triple for this stuff if you wanted to but it's the exact same stuff iso 68 anti-wear hydraulic oil so this is for heavy duty equipment type stuff so there's five liters in this we're going to put two and a half of that into the head and we should be good then to move on and get things cleaned up So at the recommended amount, the two and a half liters that I was told by King Canada, I still wasn't really up into the sight glass. So there's a sight glass just back here behind the, uh, the chuck. And uh, I wasn't seeing any oil on it. So I kept giving it a little bit more, a little bit more until I started seeing it in the sight glass. And now we're currently at the red dot in the sight glass. And that was about three and a half liters. So I'm pretty sure we're good there now. It's where it should be on the sight glass. We're gonna put the top back on and start cleaning this baby up. Now that we've got the headstock stuff taken care of, it's all cleaned up, full of our ISO 68 hydraulic oil, uh, we're ready to get into cleaning stuff up. So like I mentioned, I'm going to use some WD-40 here. Uh, we're going to clean up, there's a bit of goo in a few places, like here on the back side of the chuck collet, as well as along the ways and in amongst, you know, on the actual uh, surfaces down here, you know, on the, uh, the cast iron. So I'm just going to take a rag or a piece of paper towel, squirt it down with some WD-40, get things a wipe, get it all cleaned up. Then we'll move everything in, get the rest of the bed cleaned up. 
then we should be ready to go ahead and get some of that SAE 30 on it that it calls for. So, let's start cleaning it up. So just as a quick example, you can see some of the like little goop and shit that's on like the ways. So what I'm doing is I'm just making sure all that stuff is gone. We'll re lube it up with the SAE 30, and that way we're sure that we're gonna have clean running precision surfaces here. Not have to worry about any kind of aggregate or stuff being there grinding away on our precision surfaces. So back we go. So I'm just going to pop you back here again. You can see, I don't know if you can get a really close enough look at that, but there's a bit of goop and a bit of gunk coming out of uh, down around the uh, the actual bed under the ways there. Uh, the ways are pretty decent, just a bit of goopy goo. But you can see like there's a bit of, few spots where there's a bit of paint on the very edges of the ways and that stuff is coming off as well. So we'll get this all cleaned up, get it re-lubed back up and we'll fire it up. So a bit more fast forward and then I'll bring you guys back. So I've got some quality time in with getting things cleaned up here on the lathe and whatnot. The ways are all clean, they're nice and oiled, everything is nice and slick, feels really good. We got our head full of the uh, hydraulic oil, the ISO 68 hydraulic oil, so that's all good. So at this point, I'm ready to put some power to this. Excuse me, I just finished having a big mouthful of beer. We'll put some power to this. We'll flick it on and we'll watch it spin around. So as you can see that little green dot on the front now, currently there's no power. So I got the breaker off. So I'm going to flick the breaker on. So you can see that green light is now on, on the front of the lathe. I've got the speed currently set A1. On the chart here, that's 270 RPM. I'm going to go ahead and one, make sure our power starts on. Now, I'm not sure if you'll hear this or not, but when I pull this down, you should hear a contactor pull in back in the electrical box. So there's that. So now all we need to do is fire up our lever to turn the lathe on. And away we go, 270 RPM in the counterclockwise direction. 
pull back up, we stop, we can go back the other way, 270 RPM in the clockwise direction. Shut it off. So there we go. Everything is oiled up, lubed up, and working well. So one last quick thing, I just want to give the guys a shout out again, thanks a lot Robert and Matt and you guys, your help is fucking greatly appreciated man, getting that lathe out of the back of the truck and getting it mounted in here and then troubleshooting the few issues we had with the electrical here today, with that switch being a bit wonky, you know, from the factory, that's kind of a, a weird one, but hey, we got a troubleshot, thank you very much guys, I greatly appreciate it, next time we're out for a few beers around me for sure. Now that we've got our lathe all cleaned up, all up, working as expected. We're ready to start taking some chips. Now what I'm gonna do right now is leave you in a cliffhanger because I'm not gonna take any chips in this video. Uh, unfortunately, I'm out of time for the day. I can get in to start to actually get, yeah, it's getting a bit late in the evening. So I'm gonna go ahead and clue this one up. In the next video, you'll get to see me take some initial chips in this. So I hope you guys come back. I hope that the bit of clean up and the bit of initial, I just got my lathe sort of thing prepped is informative for you guys and helps you guys out for those other uh, home hobbyist machinists and whatnot. And hopefully you'll come back and join me for the uh, the journey as we continue forward into uh, machining Nirvana. Thanks for watching.